For when we see the Lord, all things are in their proper shape. Lift up your head. Look up, lift up your head. For your redemption is here. And we know you are set up for us a platform. And we, we cleave to your name. We possess our possession. And we give you thanks. We give you thanks. Now the features of these times that we are in. You have begun to show us little by little. And here is another feature you have placed in our heart to see. Therefore, let the spirit of truth come upon one and upon all. And continue to come upon one and upon all. As may hear the testimony we are given in different parts of the world. When this message shall come to them. Let the breath of the Almighty be upon your word, Almighty God. Thank you, Father. It's a beautiful day, Lord. We celebrate the fact that the heads of our mega countries are subject to you. And if any lies up not with your word and will, they'll be taken care of. Thank you, Father. Let the anointing rest upon our mind and heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And in that day shall that servant be sent forth. And in that day shall that servant be sent forth. What servant is due to be sent forth in that day? Which day has begun for us? And we take the reading of the scripture from Matthew 24. And then we will run through the message. Good enough. This morning, I separated it into part one and part two. So we don't take too much at a time. And uh, we shall be looking at this again. It's Maybe two weeks from now, God willing, God directing. If you come to Matthew 24 and you pick up the reading from an earlier verse than what we have called out here, verse 45 to verse 47. Now, we'll read from verse 42. It says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth Come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Lift up your hand and say, the house of God shall not be broken up. We shall take up responsible leadership and the house shall be intact. For the Lord of the house has the house as his greatest possession. He that loves the Lord's house loveth the Lord, and the Lord shall show him kindness. But the house of the Lord shall not be broken into, there shall be responsible leadership, fed with meat in due season. We would know their responsibility. And they will not suffer. They will not allow the house of the Lord to be broken into. Oh Lord, let it be so. Let it be so. The salvation that you have procured for us, the soteria is full and great. We ask you, Lord, for as much as the highest possession of the most high God is the body of Christ the church of the living God and in practical terms it is the church in the given locality almighty God 
no, nothing evil shall break into the house. Responsible leadership that will hold on to God and proclaim his word in truth to the congregation of God's people. Thus shall they be kept and thus shall we be kept. The house of the Lord shall be preserved because it's God's greatest possession. And we shall say Amen. So if somebody is associated with the house, there's safety. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord, responsible spiritual leadership, our rising shall take hold of the beautiful things that belong to our day. In the name of Jesus. What verse was that? 43, we'll read again. But know this, that if the good man of the house has known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered. That is the meaning of suffer means allowed. He would not have suffered his house to be broken up. This house shall not be broken up. Let the frenzy with which the wicked one has occupied himself against this house, the house cannot be broken up. It's not a geographical society, it's not a social organization, it's the house of the living God. Verse 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is what? A faithful and wise servant, whom his heart had made ruler over his household to give the word meat in due season. This is the hour God is going to send forth his servants. But he will look around and see those who are using the offices. Several offices they have been given of the Lord. How they have been using it. For it is time for the Lord to set forth. An end time ministry. An end time servant of God. With all that is needed. Okay, let's just go on. Other things will come on board as we go through. Verse 45. Let's read together now. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord had made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? And notice the form of word in verse 46. Blessed is that servant. And the question is, who is that servant? That the Lord shall set forth in this last hour. That's the subject matter because in that day, the Lord shall what? Set forth that servant, that faithful and what? Wise servant. But who is he? We ought to know. Verse 46 again. Blessed is that servant. Whom is Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. What will that lead to? Verse 47. Verily I say unto you, he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Hallelujah. All of his goods. All of the powers of Christ. All that can be expressed through ministry. All of his goods. We are coming to that hour when that servant shall be made manifest and shall have what? all his goods. Fullness of the prophetic, fullness of the, the evangelistic, fullness of the teaching, fullness of the shepherdic ministry, all goods. <laughs> he shall make him ruler, he shall possess all his goods. Who is that faithful and wise servant? 
who when the Lord comes shall find doing the duty he has signed to them what will he do he will lift them up and send them forth say with me the servant that he sends has been a servant of his called to another duty post to another realm of ministry which is the highest and best and takes up with it all desirable things for the perfection of the church Amen. He shall make him ruler over what? All is good. Amen. And that is what is the body. In that day shall that servant be what? Sent forth. So we say central to the artworking of the Lord's end of the age program is the emergence of that servant described as faithful and wise in whom the Lord will invest unlimited grace and power. Lift up your hands and say, it has been written. It shall be, it shall be fulfilled. Shall be fulfilled. Right, now, right now, they don't have all the grace and power, but they are serving in the realm God has given them. But they shall surely Come to the reign of unlimited grace and power. Now, what we are simply saying suggests that that servant is not one person, but a corporate man. One person is the nature of the flow of words. If understood in a natural way, who then is, not I, who then is that Faithful and wise servant. In what is he faithful? He gives what he's given. In what is he wise? He refuses to be distracted. He keeps the, the food that God has given him to give to his house. Because God's house is his greatest possession. Lift up your head. If you have an attitude of heart that is totally patronizing of the house of God you commit your all to the house of God you'll be great in the sight of God you just see in the eyes of man it seems to be a feeble gathering but the greatest possession of God in benicity is the local congregation that are gathered unto him according to his will so you must know how to be, behave yourself in the house of God is the means by which a man can attain to greatness. If you love the brethren, if you serve them with faithful heart, if you do not lord, of, lord it over them, but understand that one is their Lord, Jesus Christ, who purchased the house with his own blood. If you serve with that attitude, if you look at your brother and your sister with an understanding of agape love, he shall lead you in the path of wisdom. And he shall lead you in the path of faithfulness. So we say, central to the artwork of the Lord's end of the age program is the emergence of that servant described as faithful and wise in whom the Lord will invest unlimited grace and power. Now, what then is that servant we ask what then is that servant the question is deliberate but let's move on who then is that servant is the lord who asks the question and he answers it severally in all scriptures who then is that servant the lord asks and following which he provides the answer severally his answer provide us light to be able to answer the question what then is that servant the object of this administration is to identify that servant in the next message we shall set forth the characteristics of that servant so who is that servant who is that servant 
Let's see scripture testimony respecting him. Now, if we go to verse 47, which is already on the board, a consideration of the things said in it will lead us to go to Revelation chapter 10. Because of time constraint, we will not be able to read from verse 1 to 7, but we'll at least read verse 7 because there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between that servant and the servant revealed to us in Revelation 10, 7. So let's re read this one again and see what is said about it. Want to go? Verily I say unto you, he shall make him what? ruler over all his goods. So that all that is to be done is available to that servant. And they will perfect the work and will of God. Amen? Amen. So we go to Revelation 10, 7, and we read. And we know that that servant must be this servant. For this servant of Revelation 10, 7 seems to have the capacity to bring forth the total fulfillment of God's plans and purposes. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. Are we there in Revelation 10, 7? Are we there? Let's read one, two, go. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be what? Finished, perfected, completed. As he had declared to his servant, the prophet. So the seventh trumpet angel has all it takes. He's a ruler over all of the goods of his master. Is that not so? Is that not so? So let's read it again. And taking that as a conclusion, we read further. I want to go. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, minister the things that have been given him. The mystery of God, which is the church, the mystery of God is in the church, is the church. Say, the church. Again, the church. Again, the church is the mystery of God. The mystery of God should be finished. That means the church should be perfected, brought to its full, the fullness of its glory. And these things that he shall do in the church, he has already declared to his servants what? The prophets. That's the Old Testament servants and prophets. So the seventh trumpet angel has all that it takes to fill the role and fulfill the prophecy given concerning that servant. That servant. In the days of the voice of the seventh trumpet, when it shall begin to sound glory. So we read. In Revelation 10, 1 to 7, particularly verse 7, the word of God identifies the end time ministry sent forth to fully execute and bring to conclusion God's program as the seventh trumpet angel. Thus, that faithful and white servant made ruler over his goods, spoken of in Matthew 24, 45 to 47, is none else. But the seven trumpet angel. Amen? Amen? But we should ask, you know, the mind of man. We should ask, one could ask, is the personage that is the seven trumpet angel one entity, is one individual? Praise the name of the Lord. But we can read Revelation 10:7 and find immediate relevance of that verse to Revelation 11, 14. So when we read Revelation 10, 7, we shall go ahead and read Revelation 11, 14. So that we know that all the scriptures from that 7th verse to verse 14 are in the same connection. And we shall see the reason why. So let's read Revelation 11, 14, and then, okay, let's first of all read uh, 
10-7, then we we'll go to 11-14. Want to go? But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when it shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he has declared to his servants the prophets. Now verse 14, chapter 11, for the practical expression of what Revelation 10, 7 means. All right, the second world is past, and behold, the third world cometh quickly. Verse 15 now. 15. Let's read it. Want to go? And the seven ages sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So it's the same transaction from the seventh verse of Revelation 10 verse 7 to this particular 15th verse. Alright? Now, that being so, we are told of the Lord sending forth his witnesses. So go to Revelation 11 3 and from this we learn that the seven trumpet angel is not one man and as we go, we, con we continue to see that it is a many-member body. And how that body is constituted is shown to us in this passage, which is in context with Revelation 10, 7 and 11, 14, and 15. So let's read this. Want to go? And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth. So much food is packed here, we shall eat it in the due time. But if you read Revelation 13, the time of the nonsense of the beast is said to be 42 months. 42 months are the same as a thousand two hundred and three score days. So when the beast says it is as its highest and best, there is the body of ministry that can subdue it. Hello? Okay, say with me. 42 months are three and a half years. And three and a half years are approximately 1,260 days. At a time when the beast will say it has all these all powers, there is a ministry on earth that will subdue it, that has power to crush it. Glory be to God. I feel like dancing. Glory. Osamagbe. All right. We come. Revelation 10 8 to Revelation 11 15 provides context for the realization of Revelation 10 7. This context reveals the sending forth of the lost two witnesses. And if we read of these two witnesses, we know it is the saying that the Lord promised will come before the close of the age. And we are going to read now um, Malachi 4 verses 5 and 6. Now the detailing, the detailed study of these things are with a view for us to know what great and important days we are in. And now that everyone must walk circumspectly, living a life that is totally loyal to Christ and is totally faithful. Amen? In Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6, we are told that God will send, God will send Elijah. And the context gives that it is not the Elijah of old, but the Elijah kind of ministry. Which when we read verses 5 and 6 
of Revelation chapter 11, we see that it is the fulfillment of God's pledge in Malachi 4 verses 5 and 6. So let's read it together. I want to go. Behold, I will send you what? Take it again. Behold, I will what? Who is speaking here? I will send you what? A Amen. Not the Elijah of the old, but the Elijah kind of ministry. And the Elijah of the, the prophet. Before what? The coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before the pouring of the seventh via judgment. This ministry will be there. And there. Uh, it will walk exceedingly towards the house. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. One of my sons was talking to me uh, so weeks ago. He said, you must entertain feedback. Feedback. And there's a feedback that should help us to know how our children are doing. But God has gone ahead of us. He's working upon our youth. Those here and those outside. And the intensity will uh, increase. Because there's no way we can step into fullness without our children. Not a hoof will be left behind. And the Lord has shown a mighty building of several floors and called it a school. And many youths we are finding it. It's an indication that God will do a great work among the youths. In the name of Jesus, Amen. our youth shall not be left behind. Amen. And there shall be grace for this, the fathers in the work to pour out upon the youths. Look at it in the Bible. In the Bible. Zachariah was 30 something years old. Haggai was 70, 70 something years old. They combined. When this was prophet, back, 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 and prophesied for four hours, Haggai would just step there. He would just prophesy for 30 minutes, and the combination is explosive. Hallelujah! Because the young men have strength. I have strength. <laughs> back, 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 back. Two hours they are still preaching. Some of us are still able to do that. I'm still able. But generally speaking, the old men just go and give bam, and they go. Hey, before I would preach for four hours, but I don't do so. Not because the energy is there. But when you go back to where you preach for hours, you find. <laughs> said it is as though they didn't understand you. So now, a little at a time is the way of wisdom. But there will be catabolas with you who will spit out fire. But the fire must be according to the word of the Lord. So, they shall turn the heart of the fathers toward the children. You are not wasting time. When you are with the youth, when we are the, with the teenager, you are not wasting time. Give them fire! And the fire will burn. Amen. That's why when any of them call me asking questions, I have time. When you call me, ask questions, I say, let's do for a more convenient time. But when they call me, that time is called convenient time. And they will take one and a half hours, two hours. And when I say, I say okay, let's say, say, say uh, that the police, I still want to have. say, where they hell were war. <laughs> would you be tired? But it is God something because he will turn. Sometimes fathers don't have time for children. In fact, one of the problems in homes is men are absent fathers. They're not giving attention to their youth. Should that also happen in the house of God? No. God will pour forth his spirit. And it will turn the heart of the father. Told the children. And the children say, hey, we, this is old school, old school. We are talking about the anointing, it's talking about purity before power. What is purity before power? 
we, we are not so pure, but the power is flowing. The anointing will turn the heart of the children to their fathers because one Lord is served. That is the only way the nations will be saved. It will be a body of people. God is interested in the church. If the greatest thing that I can give to you in this message is that you might know that the house of God is a mystery. Be careful how you walk in and out among God's people. Be careful how you look at a child of God. You can't dismiss that child because of one thing or the other. No way. No way. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God. Who in Christ in Christ is what reconciling the world unto himself not imputing upon them their trespasses that's the, the trespass no his power will consume come as you are and the word of God will burn off such things it's not going to be one one say how many how many persons did you kiss this week no way they listen to the God one what the, the message was and they are permanently delivered there was an attitude to welcome the youths. For the power of God will come by the Spirit of God to reconcile them. Otherwise, if there's no one, people, you can imagine Duca, not yet 40, running with the message, well, guys, that they say I've prepared the ground. 3,000 people are waiting to come. I've, in the last three months, I've done well. When I go, Huh? But I can't be doing that thing that I, I've been doing and still do now. A time comes when the youth will step into ministry. He said, Don't say the Lord. Oh, Forget about it. That's what the Lord says. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come to smite this noise making nation with what? A curse. The redemption of the earth is bound up with ministries coming forth with an Elijah anointing. That is the ministry of that servant. That servant Elijah. It will turn the heart of the father to the children. It will turn the heart of the children to the father. The Lord will not smite the earth with a curse. Are we listening? Are we listening? All right. So we go back to Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And we find that in the parallel passage in Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6, it just says, fathers and children. Amen? So the ministry will stir up those people. And they will be in a certain formation as seen in Revelation 11, verses 3 and 4. Anyhow, let's read. Revelation 11, 4 says, sorry, the ministry lead, okay, Revelation 10, 5 to Revelation 11, 15 provides context for the realization of 10, 7. This contest reveals the sending forth of the Lord's two witnesses. What verse is that? You say Revelation 11, 3. What verse is that? Let's say, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. That is, they will appear in human clothing. The human clothing is called a sackcloth. What is the human clothing? What is the human body? That is, they will still be human and visible. The anointing is coming. <laughs> oh, God has given me a song with eight stanzas. We're expecting this day to come. I can't sing the song before the due time. But when that due time is come, we shall learn of the song with eight stanzas. Surely the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
So I'll give power to my two witnesses. They shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in humanity. The, 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 the wonders of the work will, will be so astounding. Eh? And this one human being, <laughs> funny <things. laughs> You know, funny things will never end sometimes. I was ministering somewhere, I think it's, it, it was in the Bear Aquarium in 1992. And the sister that I was looking at this person is not a human being. Not a human being. I'm going to ask him some questions. And that time I can minister for 13 hours. Back, 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 back. Hey. But now, when my brother has ministered for one and a half hours, while we are closing, I normally see him running out to go enter a vehicle and go. So he came, he came to, when he was going, he told the husband, I want to go meet Brother Hope. Then I said, can't you, can't, are you not sensible? So put it as business for 30 hours, want to go, will the man rest? He said, he, that one rest, is that still a human being? That person is a spirit if you do not know. Clothed in sackcloth. Whatever happened in 1990? <laughs> what was I preaching then? In my hand. But the wonders that God will do with this rain that is coming will astound men. But there will be evidence that they are clothed in sackcloth. But if they say two witnesses, then it cannot be one man. So that seven trumpet angel is a many member body. God is going to spring for not one man say, if you don't queue behind me, you cannot follow God. No, 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 no. God will have grace multiplied all over the world. And wherever there is truth and the truth people gather, God will manifest himself there. We will not worship man. Because even in the harvest work, the Lord will be said to be doing the work. Because his instruments will be swallowed up in the testimony they give concerning the son. All of that is in Revelation 14. We can't go into that now. But here is what I am saying. That faithful and wise servant is not one man. Yeah, he says two men, but it's not even two, but a body of people, as we shall see. And the, the, the way to go about it is taught us. And this thing will surprise you why a people must give total attention to ministry the life of God to a congregation like this. This is what we have. We cannot wish for another body of people. God's wisdom have gathered these persons. This person may say, this brother told me and I came. No, it is God that has brought each man here. And everyone you see here can be mighty for God. Preach the message. The message will make the people. In the name of Jesus. So, who are these two men? Because in verse 5 and verse 6, people will guess widely. I said, this is Elijah and Moses. Because of the thing written in verses 5 and 6, remind us of things that happened during the days of these ministries. No, not these two men. For the least in the house of God is greater than Elijah and Moses. Hello? <laughs> Have you ever thought of that? That the least is greater than Elijah and Moses? It's great, so fear will catch you to say, <laughs> You have a grace greater than that of Moses. Moses? Not an unusual man. But grace will give us a placement. Amen. Over and above that, and we must line our heart in faith. That was a man, Moses. Respect him. Say, are you, are you talking about me? That two persons are prophesying there and they, it is not, they, they seem to get the anointing from you. So that they will submit themselves to you. Are you envious about me? 
Moses said, I would to God that all of the lost people are prophets. What a man. That is what leaders don't want to hear today. They don't want to hear people equal to them. They want, in order to teach them, when, you, when, when an Iyamu comes to speak with Brother Hope, he must kneel down. So that I know that no matter what is good for you, Nami. Nami be your papa. But God will destroy that kind of spirit from all his people because the genuine thing is coming and everybody must line up with the word of God. There are those who do not line up and their failures discuss from verse 7 to verse 13 to verse 11. Then God redeems them. But let us allow God to be God in the name of Jesus. Anyhow, we must continue very fast. So, who are these two witnesses? The scripture takes it upon itself to interpret. Say, these are what? The two olive trees. And the two what? Candlesticks. Starting before what? The God of the earth. The candlestick means local congregations. Not one, but two. That means all over the world, there will be local congregations in the midst of which God has raised certain men and women who have their heart towards God. Ministry they meet in due season and God empowering them the more. Amen? The two olive trees and whole congregations. So God's end time servant is a body of people. Local congregations. Totally given to the service of the Lord your God. That is what we shall become. Amen. That is what we shall become. Amen. No, it happens like that. Because when we are singing and worship, I saw this my daughter dancing and singing. Then I saw the, the younger sister clapping with the same enthusiasm but not standing up. I must say, why can't you stand up? Um, I had the caution in my spirit. She's also in the spirit. Amen? Amen? Why do I say this? God's concern is for all. He knows how to choose his people. Do you think him foolish? If he thinks you cannot amount to anything great in his kingdom, he will not have saved you now. There is a wisdom behind the fact that you are born again and spirit free now. Listening to these words, God will lay hold upon you. As the ministry pour themselves out to us and we pour ourselves out to the ministry, we will all grow to the image that is written. Anyway, we will have time to eat this food. Well, let's just read this and bring this message to a close. So, the third point there is, Revelation 4 says that the two witnesses are not just two persons, but two candlesticks, all of good enabled by God to be fully involved in serving what? God's purpose. Whole congregation shall serve God's purpose. That is that they are enabled to stand before the God of all the earth serving his purpose in the power of the Holy Spirit. You can read Zechariah chapter 4 and then you can read verse 4 of Revelation 11 again to have this understanding, whole congregations is not just one, two, three, four, five going out to minister, but they go because the church sends them. They go and are successful because the church upholds them in prayers. And you can see the way the prayer went at some point in this meeting. We don't discuss what happens in a meeting, but what happens many times tell of the importance of a thing. In the mind of God. Amen. 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 We we'll go quickly. Likewise, Revelation 11 4 says that the two witnesses are not just two persons, but the two olive trees standing before the God of all the earth. The olive tree as seen in Zechariah chapter 4, verses 3, 13, and 40, are anointed ministries with prophetic graces, faithfully serving God in the forum of the local church in particular as well as serving the body of Christ generally. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 27, Revelation 1, 1, 
and 22 16 tells us of the importance of the local congregation there is no person as great as the local church in fact God will speak to one because he has many in view and if the one disconnects from the many he ceases to be special before God are you following what I'm saying do you understand that was what God told us very clearly in 1983 you remember if you remember yes so long as your heart is as the heart of God towards his people you have a place but immediately you disconnect you lose touch with God as one whom he deliberately empowers and teaches amen, amen. all right Likewise, Revelation 11 4 says that the two witnesses are not just two persons, but the two olive trees standing before the God of all the earth. The olive trees are seen in that passage are anointed ministries with prophetic graces, faithfully serving in the forum of the local church in particular, as well as serving the body of Christ generally. We will turn to the book of Matthew to get two more references on our subjects before summing up on who that faithful and white servant is. In Matthew 24, 31, we find that Jesus Christ refers to the, to the servant sent forth as his angels. So give us Matthew 24, 31. As his angels, that servant, he calls his angels. So not one person, but several persons. As we see in Matthew, just as we have seen in the book of Revelation. But the glory in it all, we are single individuals shall move with unusual anointing. That unusual anointing will rest upon the church, will rest upon the local congregation. Amen. You don't want to say amen? amen? Too good to be true. You shall see the glory of God. Amen. You shall see the glory of God. Amen. Two months' time, we may be breaking bread. If that happens, it will be a breaking of bread where there will be testimonies of what God has done, of tremendous healings and deliverances. No case that we have been praying for will still be there by April 10. It will be a breaking of bread. And Irene will be there. Uh, Adeso Dev will be there. All will be there to eat the bread with us. Two months of a difference. God is interested now to do now what we are believing Him for in April 10. Then what do we do? We shall, with all our hearts, open up unto Him. And if we say yes to Jesus, He will say yes to us. You know, God <laughs> sometimes certain things are difficult. One time like that. The Lord said, He opened Psalm 91, verse 14 to 16, and nobody in the congregation could read it. Reading is not just to open eye and read the letter. Well, then, I was shocked. If you come back, we'll be able to say it from my heart. And I couldn't read it, nobody. I said, Father, I beg. <laughs> I beg. That's why I came here and said, you people pray for me. I don't know what happened. I can't read Psalm 92, 14 to 16. That's the end now. What am I saying? God sometimes says things to us to wake us up from our dust and our fears. That day is coming. But God says, today is the day. You just gave school fees to your child. If you've been evil, no out of good gifts to your child. How much more shall I give good gifts to you if you ask? It is that what is eight days old today that God spoke. Uh -huh. What does it mean? If we ask, we will receive. If we ask, we will receive. Do you believe that? Is there anything that is said in this house of sickness and disease that cannot be dissolved in the next two months? Is there anything? Therefore, 
that breaking of bread day will be celebration service. Amen. He has brought Matthew 7, 11 to us. He has brought it. If you be evil, you know how to pay school fees. And by now, how much more shall I give good gifts to them that has and to be well is good gift. And anybody have any condition, that condition will be dissolved. Amen. Cry unto God and hold unto him. You are part of the candlesticks, all of good, standing before God of all the earth. Hold unto God. Lord, in the tumor, all must be made well. If you want to stand up to it and stand up in faith to the word of God, stand up and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Whether it is four or five cases, anybody sick with what they call strange sickness, God will deserve it. Time that diseases will be cancelled. Fruit of the womb will be ministered. Abundant evidence will be there in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. And he shall send his angel with what? A great sound of a trumpet. You may sit down. Then in Matthew 13 41, it says. Jesus Christ promises to send forth his angels as reapers of the end time harvest. So it can be demonstrated also that the seven angels of Roman Revelation 51 are also assigned to this same duty beside the administration of the seven last plagues. Okay, we are summing up now, just the last few, and then we will pray. The takeaway from the above is that the Lord Jesus Christ will engage a corporate servant, a many member body. For us, we shall seek him as knowing that his thought is towards all. Amen? Amen. We shall seek him and pray. You saw the way we prayed before the message. It was led by the spirit of prophecy. But well, here we are arriving at the point we got to before the message began. The takeaway from the above is that the Lord Jesus Christ will engage a corporate servant in many bad body. The Lord has heard we lead consecrated local congregation of God's people, clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit, in driving his end time program to completion. He will lead local congregations, not single individuals. He will lead local, uh, local congregations. Not one man somewhere doing his own thing, no. But one man in the midst of a body, susceptible to the, the questioning of the brethren, accountable to them and accountable to the Lord. All that God will do, he will do in the forest of the local congregation. And he will lead them in the end time program. All of these things we see in the passage from Revelation 12 to Revelation 18. But we just take this thing and take to heart. Then it says, this local congregation will be fed with the meat in due season by members that are in the fivefold ministry who are completely sold out to God. Then this ministry in turn will grow to the fullness of the age of Christ through the supporting spiritual services of well-nourished local congregations. I will grow because you are well fed and you are faithful. Amen? Amen. Uh, uh, where are you? Amen. The chances of my growth to fullness is you. As the meeting juices itself, you will be well-nourished. You will pray for me. The congregation that's well fed on that and their responsibilities. The pray and the pray. And the pray like we prayed for Syria alone. And we continue to pray in season and out of season. 
the ministries that cause us to grow will themselves grow to fullness by our supporting spiritual services. Say amen. amen. This ministry will turn, will in turn, will grow to the fullness of the age of Christ through the supporting spiritual services of well nourished local congregation. The local congregation is God's highest possession, and God will reward the sacrificial labors of His servants who faithfully commit themselves to serving His body. Let us shout, Amen. Amen. Let us therefore labor together to see God's will fulfilled. And we shall shout what? Amen. And we shall shout what? Amen. And we shall shout what? Praise the name of the Lord. So the direction of emphasis is as we seek God individually, let's seek God collectively. Amen? Amen. Because the fullness of the age of Christ, which is called the full stature of Christ, will happen as the body supports their leaders to grow up. And these leaders growing up will minister the meat in due season. God bless you. And God bless you. Amen. 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 And God bless you. He's enrolling a people for his name in this hour. He's enrolling. You will be there. I will be there. It, you are surely looking for God when you are surely feeding the people of God. Amen? Amen. See to it that you don't forget it. There's a connection. Let us re see the way it is given in Revelation, in Zechariah 4, 2 and 3, then 12, 13 and 14. Just to see the connection. Great lions run alone. Great eagles fly alone. But they are useless to the body of Christ. When a man says, I don't want time for nonsense. Some of these brethren, they drag one down. And you want to go on your own. You will fail. It's a rule. You must labor within the context of the body. Because the highest thing that God has to say, he will say it in the context of the body. So whether the body looks weak and dragging their feet, commit yourself to them. Pray for them. They will talk, pray for you and establish you. Say amen. amen. Say that is the meaning of Revelation 22, 16. That is the meaning of Revelation 1, 1. All that God has to say, he will say then to the churches. Amen. Okay, let's see the connection. You cannot. If you are a true servant of God, you'll be hooked to the body. Want to go? And said unto me, What's yes that? And I said, I've looked and behold, candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and the seven lamps thereon. And seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof continue. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bow, and the other on the other side of the bow, the left side thereof. Okay, go quickly.